Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to do batch exports with multiple presets. This was introduced in Lightroom Classic version 9. For any number of images that you export, you can now export multiple files at once. For example, a full-size JPEG for printing and a small JPEG for online sharing. You'll do this using presets. I've selected two photos here. Let's go into the export dialog. Now this technique uses presets. You know now, after watching the last export video, that presets are saved combinations of export settings. I showed you how to create presets, but bottom line, you set all the settings as you'd like, then you click on add and give the preset a name and it will show up in your list here. Now in the end, what we're going to do here is put a check mark next to the presets we want to use and click on export. What I'll get for each image I had selected is one full-size JPEG and one that I've sized for social media. But of course there's a lot more to this, so let's take it one step at a time. First, notice that once I put a check mark next to a preset, all of the settings become grayed out. I'm locked out of changing the preset. So we'll need to prep our presets before we actually check them. Next, some presets won't let you put check marks next to them. It's only presets where you're exporting to your hard drive that can be checked and used. So this one that exports to CD DVD can't be used and neither can this one that exports directly to email rather than to the hard drive first. For my example, we'll use these two presets I've created. The first step is to prep each one of these presets to make sure that I'm going to get exactly what I want. Notice that when I click on the name of the preset and I select it, I'm not locked out of the settings. Now with this preset, I didn't specify where I want the files to go on my hard drive. I just chose choose folder later. So once I click on export, it will prompt me to tell it where I want to store those photos. I'll leave that as is. Now let's say that I'm exporting images from a wedding and I want those files to be called Jones Wedding Full Size. And then I'll review the other settings. And I'm good with these as they are. Since I've changed the preset settings, I need to update the preset with those changes. This is critical. So right click on the preset and choose update with current settings. Now let's take a look at the social media one. For this one, I had specified a specific location for the images to go. We'll leave this as is so that you can see the difference in the next dialogue that's going to come up. Now, if these are for the Jones wedding, I don't want them named Oaxaca. So I'll need to change this. By the way, I'm going to show you an alternative towards the end of this video to always typing in a new name here. But of course, you don't have to rename your files when you export. This just happens to be what I've chosen for my examples. And the rest of these settings I've already set as I like them, just a 2000 pixel result, and I'm good to go. So I've made changes here, so I need to right click and update with current settings. Now that I've prepped the presets, I can check the boxes. I'll get to this message a little bit later. Let's go ahead and click on export. Since for the full size JPEG preset, I chose choose folder later for the location, I'm now prompted to choose that. Notice that I'm not prompted for the social media one because I hard coded in where I wanted those to go. So I'll click on choose. I'll come out to my desktop. We'll put them in this export video tutorial folder and we'll create a new subfolder for full size JPEGs. I'll click on create and choose. Now I'll click on done. I can see the exports happening up here in the status bar. And because I had chosen in the export dialog for it to open finder or windows Explorer when it was done, to show me the images, I can see them here now. So I've got a social media folder 
and a full-size JPEG folder. So if you're exporting 500 or 2,000 images from a wedding and you need multiple versions, this could definitely save you some time. Let's get into a few more detailed scenarios. I'll click on Export, and let's say I do the exact same export again. I'll choose this same location, and I'll click on Done. When I redid the export, I used the exact same file names as the first export. So I wanted to show you what will happen in that case. Joan's Wedding Full Size 1 and 2 were the originals. When Lightroom found during the second export that those files already existed, it used the same names, but then appended the name of the preset. Now let's go back into the export dialog and we'll check one of these boxes again and talk about this message here. Even though we're locked out of the settings here, we can still see what they are. However, there are a couple sections missing. We're missing the post-processing one, and then we're missing any sections that third-party plugins have added. However, even though they're not shown here, when Lightroom does the export, it will respect your settings on those. There seems to be a bug here in 9.0. Now I expect when I have a preset checked that I won't see the post-processing section at the bottom. But when I uncheck this, I'm still not seeing it. However, if I cancel and then I click on export again and they're unchecked, now I see it at the bottom and I can access it and change it. So keep that in mind as you're editing your presets. Just another detail or two. I've mentioned that if you want to edit a preset, you need to uncheck all of the presets and then click on the name of the one that you want to work with. In addition, if you have one checked and you try to right click to rename or delete a preset, you won't be able to. You're locked out of it. You can only import other presets. So again, uncheck it and select it. Then when you right click, you have all of the options available. Now the checkboxes have been introduced specifically when you want to export using multiple presets. However, what if you're only looking to export one version, meaning with one preset, just like you used to do, and it's set up exactly as you want it? In that case, there's no need to check it before you export, but there's no harm either. You'll get the same result. Now before I conclude this video, I realized that I almost forgot to talk about file renaming. It's a little bit of a hassle when you want to export with multiple presets to have to update the presets with any changes that you need in the file naming. Instead, you could use a file naming template that draws on a particular metadata field, like title. Let's take a look at how this would work. I'll cancel out of here. I've got all of the photos selected here. I'll come over to the metadata panel and I'll put Joan's family, or Joan's wedding rather, as the title. I'll hit enter and then I'll click on apply to selected. Then in the export dialog, I would set up a renaming template that draws on that information. I cover this extensively in my video on renaming photos. That's part of my Lightroom Fundamentals and Beyond series. So this will be a very quick look at it. I'll click on Edit, and I'll edit the rule. I'll backspace to take out custom text, and then under Metadata, I'll choose Title. By the way, if you're using Title for something else, you could use any field that this file name template editor can draw from. So I've got Title Sequence Number. I'll hard code in also full size JPEG. So client file type sequence number. Then I'll click on the drop down here and I'll save this as a new preset. So this is title full size JPEG sequence number. Then I'll click on create and then I'll click on done. 
Now that I've assigned this for the first time, I'll right click on the preset and update with current settings. But on subsequent exports, I won't have to change this. Instead, before I export, I'll just select all of the images and fill out the title field with the client or description of the shoot. All right, this concludes the lesson on batch exports with multiple presets.